<laughs> breaking the law, breaking the law. Clay Albright here. It has recently come to my attention that somebody out there is spreading some fear about EOS and the sale of tokens to United States and Chinese citizens. Let me clarify for you the situation. Um, I guess let me first say for the record, I am not an attorney. This is not legal advice. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I am, however, a really good hood cleaner and I'm a pretty good whistler, but that's beside the point. Okay, so Dan Larimer uh, was about to launch a system that was gonna raise millions, potentially billions of dollars. He had, he put together a legal team, big one. And I don't know this part for a fact, but I am gonna guess that they contacted the SEC and they contacted uh, the regulatory agencies of these different areas, the ones that they knew could be a problem. Um, but what I do know is, per Dan, it was very difficult to uh, decipher which states of the United States uh, were going to potentially cause problems or could be problems from a regulatory standpoint. This is all so brand new. Um, what you're trying, what he's trying to avoid, is being labeled a security, and that puts you under the SEC guidelines, and therefore, you, there's a protocol. Okay. So, I know from BitShares. Uh, BitShares is legally compliant with SEC in regards to securities. And the reason is, is because there is no third party. The SEC is only involved with the securities industry to protect the consumer or the investor from the third party. So the, you have possibilities for centralization and corruption when you, when you, when you enter that third party. But when, when EOS or when BitShares can prove that it's 100% transparent um, and provably fair, well, then the SEC is like, well, and we got, we got no beef with you because there's no way you can scam the person that you're attempting to, you know, sell a security to or whatever. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the only reason the SEC would ever get involved. And there's a lot of discussion on which states are going to lean which direction and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So to, be, to make it easy and to make it safe and to, make, and to cover Dan's butt, he just simply did not allow the sale of his token to anybody in the United States. Now, keep in mind that this token, this EOS token is a marker. It's a marker for the future EOS token, but, but that's beside that he didn't want to sell the USA, so he's not liable for it. And he's not selling to the USA. If you go on and try to buy his token from the ICO, it won't let you because your proximity is in the United States. If you're in Canada, Great Britain, Australia, I believe it's not a problem. You know, and unfortunately, several United States citizens have decided to go around the rules or bend the rules and go in a different direction. And they've either, you know, purchased a VPN so they can hide their, you know, local computer uh, or the physical, or they've, you know, honestly, all the brokerages out there, all the uh, cryptocurrency brokerages have um, purchased the EOS to token and, and resell them to, uh, you know, customers on their crypto exchange. So, you know, the registering of the token is done through an Ethereum wallet and Ethereum wallets don't request a physical location. They don't care where you are in the world. So, you know, a lot of people have picked up the coin elsewhere and they've registered them, you know, under an Ethereum wallet. And there you go. I mean, there's no other explanation for the fact that the United States and uh, China are the number one to um, places for the uh, EOS tokens right now. I'm not laughing, but that is funny. Uh, you know what? And Dan's uh, reprimanded people in chat rooms and uh, in videos about, you know, hey, just because you've been the rules doesn't make it right. Here's the gig. He's not going to, they're not going to shut you down for doing it, okay? They're not going to recommend it because it, they're covering their own butt, but they're not going to shut you down for doing it. 
Honestly, that would open them up for even a larger lawsuit. So I hope that explains some of what's going on with the token. Um, it's not that the United States banned it. Uh, that's not their you know, right to do so. It was simply protecting Dan and Block One's rear end by uh, making sure that um, they don't directly sell the token to a United States or Chinese citizen. Um, that's arm's length distance. As long as they're not within arm's length distance of the transaction, then they're not liable for that transaction. I hope this clears up some of the confusion that might be out there. And uh, if you got any questions or comments, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear from you. See ya.